Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sherry Seligson. I know we are jo joining a little bit later than normal today, but um, wanted to give some space for another live that was done a little bit earlier. Uh, we're just keeping you guys busy, as best as busy as we can. Um, or today we're gonna continue our discussion about marine organisms, and I wanted to talk about echinoderms. Um, so I want to give a couple of minutes for people to jump on because it's a different time right now. And I'm outside because I got kicked out of our house. <laughs> we have a lot of stuff going on in there right now and it's a little bit noisy. And so um, I decided it's a pretty day outside. I'd come out here and we could just do it out here. It's a little bit blustery, but um, we'll still have fun doing it out outside. So anyway, we're going to be talking about echinoderms. And echinoderms are ocean organisms that you're probably very familiar with. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of echinoderms. And I want to first talk about um, why they're given this name. This is a phylum, a group of organisms. We group organisms into different um, groupings based on similar characteristics or where they live or how they behave. And echinoderm is, is what the common name for these guys. They're in phylum echinodermata. E uh, derm means skin, like you go to a dermatologist for your skin. Echino um, is a prefix meaning spiny. So these guys are the spiny skinned organisms. And most of them you're familiar with. For example, you are familiar with sea stars and you are familiar with sand dollars probably. And then this is a sea urchin test or just the, the body of the sea urchin minus its spines. This is a sea biscuit. And there's other organisms that are in this phylum, but these are the more um, common ones that are commonly known. Um, why are they all grouped together? They kind of look different from each other. First of all, these guys are, these are the skeletons of all of these organisms. When they were once living, they had lots and lots of spines on their bodies. The most notable one is the sea urchin that has usually longer spines. Some sea urchin spines can get very, very long. This particular guy, um, I would say maybe his spines were about an inch long in length uh, from this species. Um, but what, one of the things that connects them is their body structure on the inside. Um, one thing that they have is they are pentamerous, meaning their body parts are divided or grouped into five. And so that's pretty easy to see with this sea star. Um, it's got five rays and all of its body parts are extended into those rays. It's reproductive organs, it's ability to move. Um, if you look closely at the sand dollar, notice the little um, indentions here. There are five of them. And looking even closer, you might be able to see ridges that are in groups of five, and on the back as well. Um, their ridges are in groups of five. And those ridges are where what our little suction cup tube feet used to stick through, and that's how these guys move around, is through tube feet. Um, this is the sea biscuit, a little bit more um, noticeable. It's kind of like a puffed up sea uh, sand dollar, but um, it has five radiations of its body. They even have five mouth parts. Um, and then of course the sea urchin, Looking at the striping pattern, you can kind of see that group of five as well. And so they're pentamerous, that's the word, P-E-N-T-A-M-E-R-O-U-S, pentamerous. Um, another thing that they do is they, are easy, they easily can regrow parts of their bodies that are lost. Um, it's most notable with um, this guy. This is a sea star, uh, again, as I mentioned. Now, um, all of them have a uh, not a head end and a tail end, they have what's called an oral side and an ab oral side. The oral side is on the underside, that's where the mouth is, and the ab oral side, or the opposite of the oral side, is on the back of this top side. And so they crawl around the bottom. A lot of them are um, scavengers, but, but sea stars in particular are predators. Uh, but if something wants to come in and eat this guy, it might go for one of its rays or its arms. But what's interesting is if a sea star loses its arm, it can grow a new one. I actually have one um, look, this is a little forearmed one, but when you look at the back, can you see that top ray right there? It's starting to grow back. This guy, when it was very small, lost one of its rays, and now he's starting to grow a new one. And so these guys can regrow lost parts, which is a help for them in the wild, because if they lose a part, uh, it, actually the predator is busy eating that part that it got, and then these guys can escape and go away and regrow a new part, because that's, that's helpful. Now, there's an interesting history story that comes with this. Um, there is an account of oyster fishermen in, I believe it's off the coast of, of Greece, because there's a lot of oyster fishing in, in Greece, and they were, they were um, diving to collect their oysters, and one of the predators of oysters are sea stars. What they do, they have a really, really creepy way that they feed. Um, they use lots of little suction cups that come out of their rays, those are those um, tube feet I talked to you about, 
and they wrap around an oyster. If you ever tried to open up an oyster or a clam while it's living, it's difficult to do. Um, it, their muscles are very, very tight. Well, they wrap around it and they use those suction cup um, feet as well as their water vascular system, which we could talk about another time, um, to pry open that the shells just enough to where they're the, maybe just the, the width of a sheet of paper open. And then these guys have a two-part stomach. They stick part of their stomach out of their mouth into the shell, digest the animal in the shell, and then pull the digested material back in through their mouth. Pretty creepy, right? But they love eating oysters. And so when oyster fishermen see a sea stars are pulling up the oysters um, from their day of catch, they would see these oysters, they would cut them in half and stick them back in the water because they didn't want sea stars to be feeding on their crop of oysters. Well, they didn't know that these guys can regrow. If there's just the smallest part of the central disc here, uh, even one arm taken off of this guy with just a little piece of the central disc will grow a whole other sea star. And so they were actually repopulating the sea star population by chopping them in half and throwing them in the water. They didn't know their marine biology. And so that's a little bit of history you can incorporate into this little echinoderm study that we're doing. All right, so these guys are fascinating. Um, again, we talked about their oral side and their ab oral side. They have, um, like I said, a water vascular system, which I meant to bring a water balloon out here, but I can describe that. Well, the way that they move um, those suction cup two feet is by having a series of water-filled tubes throughout their body. And as they put pressure on one, like if you, if you squished one side of a long water balloon, the other side gets more stiff and, ex and expands. It's that same idea. That's how they maneuver around the oceans is with their water vascular system. And that's how come a sea star has such power to feed on um, something like a clam or an oyster. So these guys are predators. And so it's not like watching predators take down their prey, but it is um, it's like a cheetah, but it is pretty exciting to see this guy in, in, in action as it everts its stomach out of its mouth and digests its prey externally and then pulls it back in. All right, so that was all of our facts about echinoderms. What I wanna do is another craft with you, and we're gonna incorporate some math into this for the young ones. Um, every day I'm trying to come up with some kind of activity using what you have around the house. And so I thought it might be fun to make a whole bunch of sea stars out of fabric, and then you can use these for math games. So um, I'm using felt, which is fine. Um, and then you also have, you could, uh, you could use fleece if you have some. You've got an old fleece sweater that nobody's wearing anymore. Everybody's outgrown, you can cut that up. You could probably even use, I was thinking you probably could use some unmatched socks. <laughs> really just about anything and so what I did was I'm using felt because felt um, doesn't fray when you cut it a little bit easier to work with so if you have felt or even um, this uh, fleece material uh, that would be ideal to use and so then what you can do is you just draw in a, a piece of paper a, a paper of a sea star and then trace it onto your fabric now one of the ways I did it because um, it's difficult to draw on fabric I had a permanent marker and rather than scraping it across, you just kind of did dots all the way around and then cut out two for each sea star. And then what we do is we actually will sew them together. Now you can use, um, besides using different kinds of material, you can use a lot of ways to attach your two sea, uh, sea star pieces together. You can glue them with hot glue. Um, you can use um, a string or yarn. And so what I'm using is I'm using some yarn or some string that I have and I'm using a blanket stitch to sew mine. Now you can just sew and just around and around and around and around like a little whip stitch it's called. But I'm gonna show you real quick how to do a blanket stitch. So we're gonna learn some sewing today, how about that? And so what you do to make a blanket stitch, cause it kind of looks kind of cool when you do that. Um, I've got my two pieces together and I'm just doing the last couple of arms. Now what you also wanna do is I'm stuffing mine a little bit. And so I'm, I've done all the way around except for this last little bit. But let me show you for the blanket stitch, all you do is you go from front to back just a little bit inside like that. And don't pull your thread all the way through. Pull it partly through, so you have a loop like this, and then come from back to front through that thread and pull. Now I'm gonna get up close so you can see it a little bit better. So this is sewing class, guys, here we go. So we're going front to back. Let's see, like this, front to back. And pull, but don't pull all the way through. And then we're gonna come back to front and catch that and pull, okay? So there's your 
there's your uh, sewing lesson for the day. Teach your kids how to do this. They're big enough to do a lot of this stuff. It's not that difficult and it's kind of fun. And then let's stuff it a little bit before we close it all the way up. And what you can do, I'm using, um, I've got some polyfill. I just had, like I said, I've got some of this stuff from just crafts I've done over the years. But I have polyfill. You can even cut up those single socks and you can use those to stuff it, little bits and pieces. But I'm stuffing mine with polyfill before I close it up completely. And I'm just taking small pieces and I'm gonna use a pencil and just kind of stuff it in each of the little rays. We call them, we can call them arms, but scientifically it's better to, to refer to them as rays. Either one's fine. I also call them sea stars instead of starfish. Occasionally I'll use the word starfish, but we use sea stars as a term because they're really not fish. And so we're trying to not um, give anybody any misconceptions that these guys are fish. And so we will call them sea stars because they are in echinoderms. Um, again, they, they look nothing like a fish, but there are some fish that don't look much like fish either. All right, so I've got some small pieces. I'm stuffing them in. And then what I would do is I would um, whip stitch all the way around again or blanket stitch like we just talked about to close this up. Um, and so then I would have my little stars. Now, what can you do with these things? Well, there's a lot of things you can do with these. This is not just for fun for a craft, even though making it as a craft is kind of fun. Um, what you can do is, think about it, there's five rays on a sea star, right? So you can work on adding or, or counting. You can count five. Now I have how many? I've got 10, five and five or 10, there's adding. If you make like five of these or six of these or seven of these, you don't even have to make them stuffed. You can just cut out felt strips, uh, shapes like this, and you can use those for adding. You can write in a uh, permanent marker the numbers one, two, three, four, five. You can count by fives, five, 10, 15, 20. You can play hide and seek with these guys. The kids can hunt around for them. Um, you can do multiplication with these. Um, you can do, I've got one five, I've got two fives, I've got three fives. Three fives is how many? 15. Five, 10, 15. Three fives is 15. So we can use this for multiplication. We can use it for adding. We can subtract. We can say, what if this poor, we can write us write a story row, well, right? You can use this to write a story problem. I know kids have a really tough time with story problems. Here's one. Poor little sea star out in the ocean loses an arm. Four, he had five arms and he lost one, right? An equation that shows how many he has left. Five minus one equals what? Five minus two. And you can do it like that. Have them write it out as a story. Have them write one for the, each other so that um, maybe the older's for the younger's. And so they get more familiar with the, the mechanics of a story problem. There's a lot of things you can do with this stuff. You can make other, or other shapes if you want. You could actually look up and you could probably do a sand dollar like this. Um, just a circle and maybe illustrate or draw or sew or however fancy you want to to get all those parts on there and just make it kind of fun it's an ocean themed way of adding some fun to your um, your day so I hope you guys enjoyed this um, I have lots of fun talking about this we're gonna come back tomorrow I think we're gonna try back again at 3 o'clock hopefully that works as well um, and if for some reason you want to catch up on any of these, you can check all those videos on the Hip Homeschool Moms page under videos. Just click on the tab that says videos and you should see all the ones that they've got. So um, thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, someone's asking me where I'm located. I'm in Central Florida. And so it's beautiful weather out here. Actually, it's kind of hot. So um, that's why you're seeing some sun and some palm trees. Uh, we live in the South. So this is a beautiful time of year for us. August is not, so, <laughs> so that's not the time to be out here, but I'm here now. So thanks for, enjo uh, for joining me. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday.